You turn in your Bible to Revelation chapter 16. The book of Revelation. I want to talk to you today about one church that God never forgives. God's love is unconditional. God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. God loves you today, dear friend. God will forgive you for anything that you've done and whatever else. Well, there's some truth to some of that stuff, but there is one church. They are a called out assembly, a uh, universal church. There's one that God never forgives. And I'm going to show you the scriptures to prove it. Revelation chapter 16, verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Oh, come on, God. Why not just forget it? Forgive and forget. I mean, let's not hold on to yesterday. This is, what's, what's he so bitterness? Or what's he so bitter for? I mean, it literally says, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, you know, talks about that. The fierceness of his wrath? <laughs> Sounds like he's holding on to some negative feelings. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> I'll show you why. Revelation 17, verse 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Angel comes along and says, hey, you have to see this, John. Come on. Come here. I have to show you this. This, this is going to be good. We're going to judge this great whore for the things that she did in the past. Don't tell me God doesn't care about things that were done in the past and whatever else. Uh, God cares about this system, this mystery Babylon system. Revelation 17, jump down to verse 14 through 18. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Not just a small group, in other words. Uh, this is a worldwide movement. Biggest church on earth is the Catholic Church. And you can go down through Revelation 17. It's definitely Roman Catholicism. It's not America. Okay, America's not a city. We'll see that here in a minute. Um, verse 15, And he saith unto me, let's see, verse 16, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her des desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. If you haven't figured it out yet, you are living in deception. You are living a lie. The Vatican reigns over the kings of the earth. You say, well, I don't know if you can prove. Okay, what other man do the presidents, all presidents, go and bow before? The Pope. Show me anybody else that that happens with. I mean, do you have the President of the United States or the President of France or the Prime Minister of England or the, any of them? Do they sit on thrones and have kings and rulers and things coming and bowing down before them? Do they offer knighthoods and things like that? And they come and they're subservient and whatever? You say, well, the, the, the British, you know, the, the British royal family, they have knighthoods that they give out and whatever. Okay, is she subservient to the Pope? The queen, is she subservient to the Pope? Yes, they all are. Who is Mystery Babylon? It's Roman Catholicism. I mean, you know, go down through there. Uh, verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar. Purple and scarlet. You have purple, the archbishops. Scarlet, you have the cardinals. Look at the big Vatican professional or processionals and things. Well, professionals too. And purple and scarlet. So it's describing here. They were the ones that killed the, the saints and martyrs of Jesus Christ. Again, you see that. And she has daughters. All the daughter churches of, of the harlot, Mystery Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church. There's no question who this is written about. Revelation chapter 18, beginning in verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, 
and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Oh, God will forget. God forgives and forgets. It's not what the Bible teaches. It's not what it teaches. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double under her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Think about what it just said there in verse 7. I sit a queen, the queen of heaven, and am no widow. Mary, holy Mary, mother of God, she's no widow. Hmm. And shall see no sorrow. The Catholic Church, they don't see any sorrow. We're always, you know, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. It's the Roman Catholic Church. It's who it's talking about there. And God doesn't forget it. God doesn't forget what she's done. You go to the Catholics, you say, hey, hey Roman Catholics, uh, what do you think about Fox's Book of Martyrs? They sell Protestant propaganda. What about Martyr's Mirror? It's more propaganda. What about the uh, story of the Waldenses by, I um, can't think of his name right now, uh, J.B. Wiley, you know? From the 1800s. That's just propaganda. 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 Oh, we, we, yes, you know, there was some killing on both sides, but, you know, eh, whatever. God's not forgetting. God's not forgetting the cries of the little children that were raped by the priests and the nuns and the monks. God doesn't forget that stuff. And all the other evils, the wars that were created by the Catholic Church, the Crusades, all the murdering, all the death, all the forced conversions, God's not going to forget any of it. He remembers her iniquities. You better get out of it. If you're a Catholic, you better get out. I mean, right now, if you're a Catholic, isn't your faith shaken a little bit by what's going on with the Catholic Church? Their interdict, the papal interdict that they have all over all the world, the fact that they're lying and deceiving people about their, we're anti-abortion here, but you can have a vaccine with aborted baby tissue in it? Doesn't that bother you? Oh, look what the church did. They just shut down all the different Catholic churches out there, and they're doing all this, this joke of the mass being served as you, like a drive through or something. Come out of her. Oh, well, let's, let's just keep praying. We can bring it back in things. You already failed your prophecy. Roman Catholicism, the prophecy is the gates of hell will not prevail against her. They have. You're in a false system. Get out. Revelation chapter 18, verse 20 and 21. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. God's not going to forget. God is planning a very, very harsh destruction of Mystery Babylon, of the Roman Catholic Church. That's why I preach so much against it. And Catholics say, Oh, you hate Catholics. You must hate us. I don't hate you. I hate the system that you're messed up in. It is the most satanic thing on this earth is the Roman Catholic Church. You say, what did you say? I'll say it one more time. The most satanic thing on this earth is the Roman Catholic Church. Period. No competition from anybody else. Don't even talk to me about it. Verse 24, Revelation 18, verse 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. You say, well, then it can't be the Catholic Church because, you see, there were people that were slain before the Catholic Church arrived, you know, and, and so technically God blames the Roman Catholic Church because she continues in that line. 
of ancient Babylon, bringing it up through and all the different kingdoms and things. She's the modern uh, head of murder incorporated, we'll say. And finally, Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat, that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. I'm going to be in that number. And boy, I can't wait. The stories I've read about the Roman Catholic Church, the things I know about the Catholic Church, from their own documents. It's not just, you know, Protestant propaganda and chick publications, comic books, Alberto Rivera series and whatever. I can read, I can read catechisms, okay? I have... My library of Catholic materials is more extensive than probably 95% of Roman Catholics out there. I know more about the Catholic Church than most Catholics do. All right? You get a few that, yeah, they know all the little, you know, Pope such said this and this, Archbishop said that and whatever. You know, there's some that know more than me. I'm not saying I'm the world's greatest authority on the Catholic Church. I don't want to waste my time uh, learning every little thing about them. But I have, I've learned a lot over the years. I've seen a lot over the years, and I think about the cries of the little children uh, that were raped by their priests and had their life messed up after that. I think about that. That bothers me. I'm not even a Catholic. If you're a Catholic, I, you're, you're, you're sick. Something's wrong with you if you can continue going, especially if you're a parent and you put your children into harm's way with some pervert, celibate priest that's in there here in sexually lewd stuff all day in the confessional box, burning with lust. And he sees your little child and he just goes, oh boy, I have to get some way to rape that child. You're sick if you keep your child going to something like that. You're really sick. And you deserve what's coming to you, plain and simple. If you're not willing to get away from the Roman Catholic Church, then you deserve the wrath of God to fall upon you. If you aren't bothered by the fact that the Catholic Church has slaughtered heretics down through the... I mean, where's that at in Scripture? Where does it ever say, go out and slaughter the heretics? People don't want to convert, go kill them. And again, I've, I've said this in other studies, and I'll repeat it one more time. You know how the Roman Catholic Church, you get the greatest argument against Catholicism is not, where does the Bible say Pope or sacrament or whatever? That's a good argument, but the greatest argument is, where does the Bible ever ever, Old or New Testament, say to go out and forcibly convert people? Where does it say it? It doesn't. The Roman Catholic Church is the Roman Empire. It's a military, governmental structure. That's all it is. And they use the titles of Christianity to deceive people into thinking that it's somehow connected to Jesus Christ, and it's not. You say, well, prove it. I already did. I've proved it for years. The papal interdict hey, we're going to shut the churches down because we have some political maneuvering to do. And the Catholics are saying, the faithful faithful ones are saying, what about our salvation? What about the Eucharist? Oh, well, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. We have some political scheming to do. You're dealing with atheists at the top. Luciferian atheists, I should say. They don't believe in the God of the Bible, but they believe in the, you know, the God of this world, Lucifer, Satan, the devil. That's who they worship. So, if you're part of that system, if you're part of the Roman Catholic Church, you are in a system that God never forgives. God is not okay with it and just, well, you know, the wrath of God is coming upon your church that you're a part of, and I suggest you run away from it.